So I'm Thibaut. I will present you our work on measuring the effects of several technical parameters on the presence of virtual entities. So what you can see here is our implementation of a handled perspective corrected display. So basically what we do here uh, is to display the right image at the right time in the right position to give the illusion that a virtual object is inside the handled sphere. As you can see, uh, it works quite uh, well and you don't even have the stereoscopy here. So we presented this work um, at the ISMAR conference last year and we got some interesting feedbacks. First, uh, I really feel like the bone is inside. Manipulation is totally intuitive, even for the rotations. This is the first time I see that level of realism. We also made a couple of observations. People were trying to touch the bone's extremity inside the sphere. And uh, people started manipulating before any explanation. Uh, all this is for me the best demonstration of what presence is. But uh, let's give a more formal definition. So uh, in the literature, presence uh, come first from uh, virtual reality fields as the sense of being there. Uh, but we found other definitions uh, in other, uh, for instance, in teleconferencing, uh, co-presence uh, is a term that we attach, we find close to present uh, where the, the most important part is to be co-present with social actors. And in augmented reality, we we'll talk a lot about the object's realism. Here's the focus in the, on the object that you display. So uh, we use this definition of presence as a psychological state in which virtual entities are experienced as actual entity in either sensory or non-sensory ways. Here we regroup all the kind of actors uh, in the term entities. So we came with a research question. Um, uh, but before I will talk about the applications of presence. So uh, for intuitiveness, for instance, uh, as uh, I explained earlier, um, people were using our device without any explanation because uh, they, the objects act uh, as they were expected. For learning environments like flying simulators, uh, you want to train people uh, to be effective in a real situation. So the, clo the closer to the situation you want to train you are, uh, the best the knowledge transfer. Uh, exposure therapy is a kind of therapy uh, where you expose um, a, a person to its fear stimulus and the more exposition, the better the therapy. And finally, in video games, uh, people are looking for it. So we came with a research question, how to produce a good feeling of presence, and in particular, which technical parameter is the most critical to do so? And before answering that, uh, we need to know how to measure presence. Uh, usually, in the literature, presence is measured with questionnaires, but we identified some problems with them. Uh, first one is that uh, we're not sure if it's valid to ask for an absolute uh, measure. It's a problem that was raised by, by Mel's letter. Um, as presence is a subjective uh, notion, maybe there is no an, an absolute scale for it. And uh, also questions are not well suited for statistical repetitions. So we came with a new protocol to rank parameters effects on presence and I will explain you this protocol now. So first, we need to isol isolate the effects of a parameter on presence. So let's say you want to t test several parameters, uh, for instance, re resolution, stereoscopy, frame rate, or anything else. You first need to uh, be able to produce different uh, levels for every of these parameters that uh, you can be able to rank from a best one to a worst one. So basically from here, uh, you can keep your best levels for every parameter and it will lead to your best effort. If you want to make a demonstration of your prototype, you will stop there. But what we do here is to make some representations uh, in which only one parameter is alterated and every other parameter is at uh, its best level. So this way we are sure that in this representation, uh, the, best, the presence will be limited by only one parameter. And this way you can do 
uh, a lot of different representations. Uh, now the next question is how to rank representations. So let's say I give you this blue square and I ask you what is uh, the blue square brightness. You might first answer me black um, and what scale. Do you want an integer? Do you want a float? I don't know. Or you might tell me probably more than 50%. It's not an easy question. But on the other hand, if I give you those two squares, uh, which square is brighter, it's not even difficult to answer. It's automatic. So uh, I made this slide to show you that relative me measurement can be more robust. And uh, in our case, uh, it does not need a scale. So for presence measuring, it's interesting. So here is our protocol. So first, uh, you give to user a representation of a scene. And uh, he has access to the switch button to change to a second representation of the same scene. Uh, the very crucial part here is not to explain the differences uh, between the representation so that the user cannot rely on a priori to uh, evaluate the difference and uh, the most present one. So the user can switch at will between the two representations and we ask them to choose the representation that is more faithful to what you could observe in the physical world. So they have access to an answer button to select the present representation as the better for presence of the two. This whole thing is called a comparison and the faster the comparison, uh, the more repetition you will be able to make. So we made a user study um, to apply, uh, to implement this protocol uh, with our um, device. And we tested uh, four parameters uh, and their impacts on prisons. Uh, we tested resolution, latency, frame weight, and jitter. For every parameter, there is an optimal level. And we added two alteration, one alteration level for latency and for frame weight, two for resolution, and three for the jitter. We did not test the stereoscopy because in a pilot study, we identified that uh, stereoscopy was nearly mandatory to have a good feeling of presence. So we always set the stereoscopy on. So with the seven alteration levels, that leads to seven representations. So once again, in a representation, there is a one parameter alterated, and all the other parameters are at their optimal levels. So we named all the representation with the name of the parameter and the alteration. So in order to implement our protocol, we need to have comparisons, be pairwise comparison between uh, conditions, so between the representation, sorry. So given the seven representations that we have, we can have this many number of pairwise comparisons. Uh, we decided to not compare uh, pairwise comparison between two alteration of the same parameters. So it remains 17 different comparisons. We tested, okay, talk. We tested on two different scenes uh, in order to have a little generalization. So the first scene is a flying butterfly that acted like a real butterfly who be trapped inside the sphere. So he could walk on the edge and he could fly inside the sphere. And the second one is a bone who is static in the referential of the sphere. We managed to do four repetitions uh, with both things for every comparison. We got 16 participants and half were women for once. Uh, last word about the implementation. Uh, we added a welcome screen between each comparison uh, to avoid the uh, automatic uh, start of the next comparison. And the buttons were implemented by tapping with uh, their foot. Uh, let me show you how it goes. So what you can see here is the welcome screen and is there, is, there are two images because of the stereoscopy. So every time uh, she clicks, you see a little blue light. It's the change between the representations. And when you see the welcome screen, it needs that she selected a representation. And same goes with the butterfly. So change. 
And that's the change. So the other one was better, so she selects the other one. Okay. So let's see the results. Uh, here are the mean user choices per comparison with the butterfly only. So uh, on the scale from uh, minus one, where the top representation has been always chosen over the right one to one where it's the opposite. So for instance, uh, this cell indicates that the small jitter was uh, preferred, so less detrimental over presence than the frame rate alteration. And all this column uh, indicates that the worst jitter was the worst of all uh, conditions. So from there and from all the statistical analysis that we can produce with our protocol, uh, we uh, managed to rank the representations from a scale from the most detrimental one to the less detrimental one over presence. So as you can see here, the worst jitter uh, representation was the most detrimental. Is uh, Here we have an equivalent uh, class where the the worst resolution alteration and the frame rate alteration and the middle jitter alteration are at the same level. And latency and small jitter were not so detrimental over presence. So we did all the same analysis uh, with the bone, uh, which lead to this second table. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of uh, common results. Uh, the only thing that changed is about the resolution uh, who was far less detrimental uh, for the bone because the bone, w we believe that uh, the butterfly who was textured and quite uh, beautiful uh, needed some resolution um, most than the, the bone. So if we regroup the results, um, we came with guidelines to achieve present with HPCD. Uh, first, avoid a, avoid a perceivable jitter, um, even if it's increased the latency, as the latency was less detrimental uh, over present. And uh, adapt the resolution to gain in frame rate. So, for instance, if you, if you have a, a lot of bones in your scenes, uh, like our bones, uh, who do not need a lot of resolution, you can gain in computing time and avoid a loss of frame rate. As future works, we would like to evaluate uh, the correlation between the results of our protocol and results obtained by questioners. Uh, we would like to test other devices like uh, widespread HMDs, uh, either in virtual reality or augmented reality. And why not testing high abstraction parameters, like for instance, the gaze of a social actor in a scene. As a takeaway, we presented a useful protocol to measure the impact of parameters over presence. Uh, we showed that it could be implemented and it gave interesting results that can be discussed. And uh, we came by implementing this protocol to a guideline to achieve presence with HPCDs. Uh, first, avoid perceivable jitter and to adapt the resolution to gaming frame rate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we have time for questions. And we have two student volunteers with questions. I mean, with, with microphones, sorry. So, any questions? Do we have a question? Well, I'll start with a question, a, a very nice contribution uh, in terms of the measurement uh, framework you guys have proposed here. One, my question is in terms of latency. So you found that latency was not det detrimental, correct? Uh, now, why didn't you test for a higher latency, let's say 90 milliseconds or 120, because when it comes to interaction, it's well known that latency is a huge problem, right? We can go even back to 1983, Chris Weekends, like 50 milliseconds starts creating problems. And, and why do you think latency wasn't an issue? Okay, thank you for the question. So um, 
In latency, or uh, even for the other parameters, uh, the question of what you will be testing and what level is the most in difficult question that we had to solve. So uh, in the paper, we made justification to why we selected those level of um, for every parameters. In terms of the latency, uh, we chose um, 60 milliseconds as the alteration because it's a uh, um, global um, widespread tablet and smartphone uh, today are at this level of latency or even better for the newest. So it's something that you can achieve even with uh, tablets, with commercial tablets today. So it seems to me not a big challenge on the other hand, uh, the latency of our um, prototype is 27 milliseconds, which is, uh, we never saw this anywhere, and it costs a lot uh, in um, devices to have this level of latency today. So that's why we tested those two levels of latency. But it seems like um, all the efforts that we put to have a very good latency in terms of presence was not so detrimental. And uh, one of the explanations given by the users who tested is that um, when you have latency, uh, bone, uh, have been, I've been told that the bone acts like if it was in a liquid. So there was a physical explanation for this. So the brain was not tricked. But uh, in case of the big jitter, one user told me when I put it on the table, it it do not need to move. It, it cannot move. It's not logical. So it's bad for presence. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have a question? Please raise your hand. Yes, question there. Uh, thank you for sharing an interesting topic. I am Yang Bushin from KAIST. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, if would there be any differences uh, about your uh, experiment results? If uh, like the dynamicity of the um, the virtual entity changes, like such as uh, for the butterfly, it was uh, quite moving dynamically, but the bone, it's quite static. So, um, what what will be the difference about that? So your question is about uh, if the differences in the results can be due to the difference in uh, the movement of the different uh, exactly yeah. entities. Yes, uh, that's a good question, and we thought a lot about this, and that's one of the reasons why we wanted uh, to uh, that uh, uh, two different entities that are that different. Um, and we're not so sure because we, for instance, we asked to the user um, to rank the overall level of presence with both entities, and they they answered the same things for both entities. So um, for some people, uh, the butterfly felt more present uh, because it was a living thing, but for others, um, it was not so well, the, the animation was not so real, realistic. Uh, usually it was um, users who were more used to deal with butterfly. So I guess uh, we are really in the topic of the subjectiveness of presence. It depends on the user. Well, thank you very much. Uh, help me thank the uh, the presenter, Thibault, please.